Hey everyone, welcome back to Musician Monday on Instagram. My name is John Klinghammer and I'm here for the Kansas City Symphony Musicians and we are spending every Monday, or almost every Monday, interviewing uh, a member of the orchestra and talking to them about their instrument and their job and their life and what they're into. And um, so today we're going to be talking to principal trumpet Julian Kaplan. And I'm going to get him to join right now. These join things have been working much, much better the last few weeks. A lot more success. Yes, there he is. Julian, how are you? How are you? Doing really well. Can you hear me? Okay, good, 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 good. There we go. There we go. Yeah. A little bit. We're good. A little bit, little bit glitchy on the connection. Let's see. Mm, happens. It happens. It's a thing. But we <laughs> want to be able to see your face and hear you talk. So let's see. Yeah. Okay. I think your audio and video has caught up to each other. So there we go. Yeah. Sounding okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds okay. It'll probably work out. I feel like I had the same problem with Jen Richardson a couple of weeks ago, and it slowly. Okay smoothed itself into for, into shape <laughs> good deal <laughs> good deal how are you doing man i'm doing great yeah yeah doing great how's your how's your trumpet playing going these days so um man what a loaded question <laughs> so um yeah to be honest it's been a little bit of a struggle um over the summer mm -hmm. and uh, as it turns out, I mean, everybody's had their struggles, of course, um, during all of this. But as it turns out, I uh, have come up with a metal allergy. A metal allergy? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So, you know, at the beginning of all of this and, and really like kind of the second half of 2019 as well, um, you know, things were just feeling like kind of a little weird. And, um, you know, typical... For, for me at least, I just thought like, I just need to play more mm. um, and for longer. <laughs> <laughs> and now in retrospect, like, you know, of course, but um, you know, the more that I played, the, the worse it was feeling. Um, uh -huh. And uh, so kind of happened um, back in March. Oh, I think you're frozen again. Oh, really? Ooh. You can hear me okay? <laughs> I can hear you fine, yeah. I think it's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I visited um, Trent Austin's shop here in, in, uh, in Kansas City, and he uh, has, a, like, a really severe metal allergy. Okay. And we weren't even talking about that. I was just asking him about the mouthpieces he played, and he lent me some. And I just thought, like, I'm going to check out these, you know, plastic mouthpieces and see what, you know, what these are like. And, uh, you know, things were like 50% better. Hmm. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. But I, metal allergy wasn't even on my radar. Um, so so the, I was, the, you know, I just the, kind of kept going back and forth. So the plastic was better, like it felt better or it was like you played on it for a week and you didn't have the allergy kind of thing? both both oh wow yeah yeah and um but I, but again like i wasn't thinking i was curing an allergy uh i just thought like well this mouthpiece feels pretty good um but then you know i would just set it aside and i'd go back to, to my regular metal one that i've played forever and uh you know the same things would creep in and my thick skull just couldn't get it through my head like you know the plastic was making a difference um, so really, it took until like the beginning of September <laughs> uh, until I like really like, committed one, you know, nonstop and see what happens. <laughs> so I actually have it here so you can see what it looks Ooh. like. Wow. The, this part is all, uh, uh, it's called acrylic. And then this bottom part is stainless steel. So uh, I don't, you know, touch the piece and, you know, touch my lips and everything. So 
uh, pretty much been going super. Well, that's great. That's, that's yeah. amazing to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what a what a what an insane thing to have happen. Yeah, yeah, and it, I mean, it was like so far out of my my brain, and now I've come to learn a lot about um, you know the process of developing allergies and like kind of the easiest way to do it is that your body has you know like a certain tolerance and once it mm -hmm. reaches that tolerance that you know you're not like developing an allergy it's just your body has reached that of how much it's allowing you to have and then that's it so yeah things are going great now I'm, i couldn't be happier I, I feel like i'm playing better than i have since i was like okay well, that's amazing that's great that you figured that out and it doesn't affect like your fingers holding the instrument at all it's more of a it's just well so that's the other thing again like in retrospect it's i should have like probably suspected something i would i wasn't getting like um you know some people get like rashes or you know bumps or something like that and i wouldn't get any of that but my sometimes my hands my fingers would feel like sunburn oh and i just thought as i was you know just holding the horn for long or you know I have no idea, but just metal allergy wasn't. Sure. But now, sure. of course, like, duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's one of those things. I used to have a thing, like, on the clarinet, the thumb, the thumb rest was made of, like, a like a vinyl synthetic material of some kind. And I had this insane yeah. reaction on my hand that I couldn't figure out for a long time, and it turned out it was... It was that. Yeah. I know that many people with, with like plant related allergies. Uh -huh. um, I know I've known like maybe a couple of flute players maybe that have like allergies and, and like have to play on gold or mm. they're allergic to gold. And they have to play on gold. Yeah. Uh, but I know if I, I know like there are trumpet players who choose to play and horn players that choose to play on other materials, but uh, Trent really was the only trumpet player that I've known um, to to actually have like a, a serious. Right. Um, and he, like, when he puts metal to his mouth, it. it off. Right, right, right. So, huh. yeah. So I didn't really have like it wasn't on the radar, and I didn't really have like a you know a large group of people to to ask about. So I really just, uh, you know, was kind of um, on that on that journey you know, in the dark a little bit. Yeah. Well, how but, awesome is it that a plastic mouthpiece that you can use exists? Like that's... <laughs> yeah. And there are, it seems like there are only um, like a few companies that, that make them. So this one that I play now is made by a guy named Peter Pickett uh, in Lexington, Kentucky. And then I've got a couple that Trent made. Um, and so I'm still like in the, say like a month ago, I was still like a baby at all. Um, but now I've, I've read enough and I've, I've tried enough equipment. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of an adolescent still learning about the, you know, the process. I've, I found equipment that really worked, yeah. uh, working really well. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. I made well, this longer. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Right. Well, at least, at least you, you've gotten there now. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Lexington, you went to the University of Kentucky, right? And that was your first job was in the Lexington, is it the Philharmonic? That's right. So okay. I was in, uh, I did my undergrad for, for five years okay. uh, because of like kind of a, a logistical class availability error. Um, so I ended up having to stay an extra year, which was fine because, you know, made those last two years, I only had to take like 11 or 12 credits. That's great. I was a fifth year senior, no worries. <laughs> and um and so my f at the middle of my fourth year um is when i won that uh my first job as principal trump in the lexington philharmonic um which plays i think like a hundred services or something mm -hmm. um all at, you know at night time so i was able to do all my school and um you know made some of those weeks pretty hard because i would be in you know jazz ensemble from you know, one to three and then orchestra from three to six and then seven to 10, I was, you know, doing, doing my real job. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, it was great. So I played that for about a year and a half. Did you find that, was that like good for your chops to just be like going and going like maybe at that time? I, 
So especially at, like when you're in school, you yeah. know, you're not really thinking about good for me, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, doing what you have to and, and mostly doing what you're told. So, um, yeah, I, I find now I, I, definitely looking back, it was, it was definitely good for me. Cool. Cool. Hey, uh, to everybody out there who might be listening or watching, I've failed to post a little thing on the stories for you to post questions. So if you're watching and you have a question you want to ask Julian or something you want to say, feel free to just type it in here and we'll, we'll see it on the screen. Um, cool. So, so that was your first job. Like a first job is a really, it's a big deal, right? You, you, we were talking earlier and you said something about like some of your favorite musical memories are just those first experiences with new with new orchestras um especially still in school like you're still a senior and you're like wow i'm gonna be a principal trumpet player yeah i had i had just turned 18 and i mean you know mostly i was taking the audition of course i was taking it to win but i was taking mm -hmm. it right across the street mm -hmm. you know from school and um and so yeah, I mean, it, what an unbelievable thing because, I mean, as you know, and, and you know, all of us know, I, I think somewhere in the back of our heads, always like, it's possible you could never win one, <laughs> you know? So uh, it, it wasn't my first audition, but it was pretty close. And um, yeah, just what an unbelievable feeling to, to go in, not really thinking like as an 18 year old still in school, I'm definitely gonna win this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to be able to do it. And then you're kind of in that like shock period where like, well, what do I do now? I've like one. Right. Uh, and, and I, you know, I'm, so this, this, this audition here in Kansas city was my fourth, uh, fourth audition that I've won. And yeah. And I, and I found like that feeling is always the same. Mm. Believable. Like I've won, I've won one. And like, now what do I do? Like, <laughs> place i have to like learn all the people and uh yeah i mean but you know what a what a great feeling though and you, you've told me before that you really actually like taking auditions is that right do i have that right i do explain yourself how 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 is it that you <laughs> that you like this process I'm, auditions to me are um like my, my teacher vince di martino always said it best it, like playing is playing and you know, like church gigs, uh, practicing in your basement, uh, playing on stage or playing an audition, it's playing is playing. Um, and the only thing that's different would be the way you're thinking of it. Um, so to me, an audition is just like some other aspect of, of like competitive playing that's something like fresh and different than what we do normally. So it's kind of like posing a, a different kind of challenge, just still playing. Right. Um, and, I, and I've never found like, you know, there, there are people who feel like auditions aren't necessarily um, applicable maybe because, you know, I would never have to play Pines of Rome and Pictures on Exhibition and Petrushka and everything like in sure. all at once, right? Sure, sure. We definitely have to play pieces that are loud and high and soft and low and, you know, um, noty or powerful, like all back to back. It doesn't matter what the name of the piece is. It's just playing is playing. Right. So, uh, yeah, to me, it's just like play for a new group of people. Um, there's a little bit of a competitive aspect to it. Um, so it's a little bit different than just sitting on stage with, you know, people that you know and people that you're working together with. Uh, so yeah, it just brings me, uh, yeah, it brings me excitement and, and, you know, just different goals. That's cool. You, I, would, you... yeah, I have one right now. I like it here, of course, but <laughs> yeah, they're fun for me. That, that's great. No, I think that's great. That, that's, uh, I like that whole, that whole idea of, um, uh, the only thing that's different is what's going on in your head. Like you're for you're sure same instrument, you're playing, playing music. It's just, it's everything that's happening up here. Yeah. Like if, if you, I've always felt playing in my basement, I can play it anywhere else. Mm. So I think it's harder to play for people that you know, 
than it is for people that you don't even see behind sure. it. No, I, I totally agree. I've always loved the screen. I'm all about the screen. Like, yeah. great. <laughs> don't, don't have to think about those people at all. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, would, you just, would you describe yourself as a competitive person? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm not like the kind of competitive person that like wishes ill on other people or anything. Like, sure. I want, especially with auditions, like, I mean, I want to win, of course, because like I'm the best player and not, you know, because like somebody else right. blew. Right. right. <laughs> and, but you're going to work really hard to be the best player. <laughs> for sure. I think even though, you know, art, you know, artists can be very judgmental and musicians can be very judgmental. Um, especially when you get to sit on the other side of the screen enough times, like you really are rooting for, you want to hear people play well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you never want somebody going home feeling like they, they had their chance and they blew it. You want everybody going there thinking like they did their best and you were just the best, best, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I do. I, I often wonder like, cause I don't think orchestra orchestral musicians there are a lot of them that are very competitive and then there's a lot that aren't necessarily but just you know everyone's got their own like sort of strengths and weaknesses and yeah uh, well and i think uh, normal basic like there there should be no competition involved yeah of course it really shouldn't be about that but you know whatever that it's <laughs> but, but the thing like with the audition it's just something something that's different uh, with that competitive aspect. Yeah, it's unavoidable. I mean, I, I always try to convince myself I'm competing against myself. You know, yeah. like it's that's really what it's about. It's more like playing golf than anything else. Yeah. But still, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to stay in that place. Like you want, you definitely want to have the best score, and not because somebody's just hitting it in the water every hole. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Cool. All right. So then. You got the job in Lexington, and then you, went to, you were in Jacksonville, um, in the Jacksonville Symphony for five years, um, first on second trumpet, and then, on, and then you won the position for principal trumpet. We, I should say I was in the Jacksonville Symphony for one year, so shout out to Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how was that, like, being a second player in an orchestra and then, like, moving over uh, like, what was that transition like? Was it easy? Was, were you just it, like, it's very, is it different kinds of playing for a trumpet player to be? Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, and, I, and I mean, I'll be the first person to tell you I'm, I'm not the best second trumpet player. Hmm. Um, uh, too big of a mouth. And uh, I, I overthink things too, too much. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know the good aspects of being a second trumpet player. I, I just don't have the attitude uh, to be like a um, a supporter in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you know, I'm like a pretty shy person, but playing wise, like I love the spotlight. I love to be the one, you know, that's why I, I've always wanted to play first trumpet. Mm -hmm. Just land in the second trumpet position. Um, and, you know, at that point it was a better job than I had in Lexington um, for, you know, full time gig. Yeah. And, um, so, um, you know, yeah, you know, I, I did my best and everything. And then, uh, so I, I played that for two years and then the, the principal trumpet player left, um, to go elsewhere. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was a really tough choice whether or not to take it because, you know, of course, then you're playing for people that, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's asking you, like, are you going to take it? Are you going to take it? And I mean, I guess there are people that will like not tell people, you know, if they're taking it or not, so they don't have that added pressure. But I, I made it very well known that I wanted that job. Um, I thought it would be pretty cool, like to, to move on up, um, and um, yeah, and it worked out, and it ended up being a very easy transition. Okay. You know, same all the same dudes, so uh, you know that I was playing with before. Um, so I ended up staying there for another three years playing principal. Uh, and then I, um, yeah, I, I just kind of, kind of fell into this uh, position. Uh, How so I, fell into? Yeah. So, 
um, for this audition, um, I wasn't even, I, I was aware when it came open, um, but I wasn't like super aware of like what Kansas City was like um you know what what position we were in you know the, the orchestra here was in right. or anything like that um and i had like a um a really crazy set of um weeks leading up to this audition um so much so that i thought like i'm i'm not gonna like i can't i just can't fit it in mm -hmm. and um as it turned out dave sullivan who I went to university of kentucky with and and for Brees, both, you know, said, Hey, come on out here. You know, in our house, um, you know, kind of a free trip. Uh, you don't have to pay for a hotel. We'll drive you all, you know, everything. And so I thought, okay, you know what? I can use this little vacation, uh, go play somewhere else. See what, you know, I wonder what Missouri is like. <laughs> um, so I was actually a late addition to the, uh, to the audition. Oh, wow. Um, and again, it was just kind of one of those that I thought, I'm just going to go play. Um, wasn't really, you know, having like winning necessarily on my, on my brain. I just thought like, I'm just going to go play and I'm going to try to play pretty. And, uh, yeah, it just, it worked out. And uh, that, this one for sure. Cause I, like, I didn't even tell my parents I was like coming out to take this audition or anything. Wow. And so, you know, I, I, I was the last guy left. I went and played another, another round and um it took a really long time it felt like after that round i was sitting in the dressing room and a really long time for justin to come and <laughs> few of us have been through that yeah <laughs> uh, like and you know you you kind of have this like whole setup like you know what it's okay if he comes hey you know sorry we're not going to choose anybody today right, right, right. So you have it like all set up and uh and so justin opened the door and he said uh, would you like to come and meet the committee? And I thought like, well, why? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I actually like said that, like, well, what for? And he's like, well, you know, you're our new principal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the way he said it to you. That's amazing. <laughs> and so I, I called my parents and I was like, so I've won this job in Kansas city. And so I guess I'm moving to Kansas city now. Uh, you know, it was just, so I, I felt like, yeah, I just kind of fell in fell into this one uh but man it's been like so I, so this would have been my fifth year mm -hmm. or actually I, I would have started my sixth year thanks man now and uh man i couldn't couldn't be happier here cool cool well we're all very happier here as well um i wanted to, what else was i gonna ask you I had a couple of other things here oh i was just this is kind of a dumb question i was just curious did you play um okay wait i've straightened something out you said you were 18 when you got the lexington job but you were a senior in college yeah no is that is that right that can't be right right unless you're like a super genius of some kind that i so so i started no i must have been 19 sorry because i started when i was or yeah i'm not sure i must have been 19 or 20 actually okay okay i, was just... I started school when i was 17 oh okay i see okay so you were kind of young yeah I sorry you. i'm a... No, no worries. I was just was just curious. You, you threw that age out there, and I was like, "Whoa!" I was twenty six when I moved here. Okay, that's right. I was I was twenty one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good math. Working through the math. <laughs> I think it's interesting too, like that you little like just talking to David and Fabrice sort of encouraged you to be like, "Yeah, I go take this audition." And that changes your life, you know, like that happens to us periodically. You, you meet people in various musical communities and someone says, oh, you should study with this guy or what, what about trying, to, you know, and it can, it can change everything if you, you go down that road sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, and how, like, how weird is it like that? T I mean, three people from the University of Kentucky ended up out here. Right. The same organ. <laughs> yeah were here well you know well before i was and they both ended up here. yeah yeah it's just kind of you know there are a lot of musicians but man it's like a really small small world right that is unusual why did you i'm just just curious why did you wind up going to the university of kentucky you said you're from from cleveland and charlotte 
Yeah. So my when I was in high school in in Charlotte, my uh, our our uh, high school marching band brass and was um, the trumpet professor at UK, oh. and he was also from from North Carolina, and that's why he was that's why he was working there. I see. Summers and then you know during the school year he would go out and teach. Um, his name is Mark Claude Felt. And uh, yeah, when I was like choosing colleges, I would you know talk to him because you know at that point I, I grew up. I say Charlotte, but it was really like farm country outside of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know at that point, like Mark was you know the most famous and best drama player that I you know that I knew of. Sure. So I would ask him, like, hey, man, like, you know, where should I look at to go to school? He was like, well, UK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it, it turned out, um, you know, I wanted to go to the, the place where I would go into the lead debt and didn't mm -hmm. have to do more. Yeah. I just wanted to, to, you know, either not have to pay or get paid um, and just be able to practice. And uh, in UK definitely had the best, the best deal. Yeah. Nice. Nice. It worked out great. Must have yeah. been a very good teacher. Yeah, man. Uh, I had two two really great teachers through school, Mark and, and Vincy Martino. Um, yeah, I mean, not a not a day goes by that I pick up the horn that I don't think about, you know, what they what they talk. That's cool. Um, all right. Well, are you ready for this ridiculous quiz? Okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> is there like it's, a record, is there a record score? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if anyone has gotten a perfect score. Yeah. I've also cheated. Like the first quiz I asked had way too many questions on it. So Max Pippenich had to answer like nine different questions. This is a oh. this is a five question. Very also his questions were kind of hard. On it. I've, oh. I've I've dialed it back a little bit. <laughs> All right. So you you were born in, you were born in Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, and grew up there, and then you moved to Charlotte when you were. I think I was, uh, I can't remember. I th maybe I was 12. Fine. Not important. The only okay. the important thing is you lived in both places. So the quiz is, um, I'm going to ask you five questions about five famous Charlottes and Clevelands. And you just tell me which Charlotte and Cleveland they are. Okay. Are you ready? I'll, I'll try my best. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry ahead of time. Okay. All right. Question number one. This Cleveland, who was the 22nd and 24th president of the United States, shares a first name with a Sesame Street character. Yeah, I get this on Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. See, we throw the softball out first. Thank you. Just to give, give you some confidence. Go out of five. So now I can... <laughs> Now you can relax. Okay. All right. This one is, uh, I'm, I don't know. Uh, think, give, give yourself a second on this one. This Charlotte lived in a barn and was best friends with a pig named Wilbur. Yeah. Okay. Do I need a last name? I don't think you do. <laughs> okay. So the, Charlotte, the, the spider from uh, Charlotte's Web. That is correct. We're yeah. going to say her last name's Web. Charlotte's Web. Yeah. Charlotte's Web. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I loved Charlotte's Web. That was like one of my favorite, favorite things when I was a kid. Um, okay. Number three. You're two for two. It's going really well. This Welsh Charlotte rose to fame as a child soprano singer of classical charts before breaking into pop music in 2005. By 2007, she had sold more than 10 million records worldwide. Hallelujah. Mm. The hallelujah is a hint. I figured as much. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, um... Dude. I think I'm going to have to take a pass on that one. That's all right. Uh, you know, honestly, I haven't thought about this person in a long, long time. It's Charlotte Church. Do you remember Charlotte uh, Church? You know, good Charlotte stuck in my head. <laughs> I thought, well, that could be it, but, it, you know. Yeah, yeah, you just can't get it out. All right, no worries. No, no shame there. Um, I feel good about you on number four. Uh, 
this Cleveland has been both a deli owner and a postal worker and is a neighbor and friend to Peter Griffin and his family. Cleveland Brown. Cleveland Brown from Family Guy. I had confidence that that was gonna be Thank fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your last question, uh, Julian, to go four for five. Um, yeah, and you don't really, okay, well. This Charlotte isn't on Game of Thrones, but if things went her way, she could be sitting on one someday. Mm. But you don't even need her name, you just need her title. Um, okay, I'm gonna say, I mean, is it, yeah, it, Princess Charlotte? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's Prince William's not a daughter, Princess Charlotte. Princess Charlotte Elizabeth Diana of Cambridge. Okay, very good. There you I, go. Adorable oh, little Charlotte. Charlotte. You nailed it, man. Four out of five means, I don't know what it means, but it, you did hey, very, very you well. Rise directly to my house. That's right. <laughs> I will, it, it'll be in, watch, keep an eye out for the postal. I'll check service. the mail every Yeah, please, regularly. <laughs> um, well, Julian? It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for joining us here on the Instagram. Of course. And uh, hope to see you uh, in person soon playing some music. I hope so, too. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, same here. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.